our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given consolation. I don't know where it cut off at, but now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an end sample unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, the Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is the token in every epistle. So I write the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, let's go on to another epistle from Paul in 1 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. You can't teach me about the law if you say you're a Hebrew, but you ain't speaking in Hebrew. You teaching out of the English Bible, talking about Babylon is fallen, telling me to read Second Edges and, and um. Maccabees, but we reading it in English. How you teaching the law, but you ain't teaching it in its proper context. You got to teach the way it was written. It say it, as it was written. It say it was written. It wasn't written in um, Roman Catholic, I mean, English. But if you're going to teach it, teach it the right way and go get a translator like the Bible say. Right? Two or three words with two or three witnesses. If you speak in a different tongue, and then they say in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. They desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know 